Hey guys, it's Charger Hater present Zoom the TBT and one of my favorite shows tonight. We have Bayheim's Army in anticipation of their matchup with the men of Mackey tomorrow. Actually today, probably you're watching it at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Charge, let's talk about this matchup. Yeah, no, I think it's a surprising matchup. Um, obviously, we had uh, Hart fired at number 14 seed, taking on the number 19 seed, uh, Men of Mackey. And um, I think everyone had their, their money on Hart fire, but uh, Men of Mackey just really stepped up, uh, uh, played a great game yesterday, took it out, and now we're going to have a great matchup versus number three, Bayheim's Army. Yeah, I think – and just to, if, if Purdue's watching the, the fan base, we both picked Hart fire, right? We were, we're the idiots here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, we're not too smart, but our guests are. Let's talk about that. We have forward Demetrius Nichols and GM Kevin Belby. Gentlemen, how are you doing today? Doing well. How are you? Doing great. Doing great. So, Kevin, real quick, like, I mean, obviously you guys are in the quarantine bubble. Um, how easy is it recruiting in time of COVID when you have such a deep roster of Syracuse slums to recruit from? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you guys for having us, and thank you for using those pictures because I'm in the picture of me, obviously, but I was in the picture – in the background of Demetrius, <laughs> lots of FaceTime. Um, yeah, this year was a little different recruiting. You know, uh, at first, I didn't even know the tournament was going to happen. You know, Dan just had kind of – he's my main point of contact and just said, look, um, hang in there with us, you know, keep making plans. So I was planning for something that might not happen. You know, luckily, I, I've had guys like Demetrius pretty much committed the day that we lost last year. Um, you know, so we had guys that – one, a few guys that wanted to play a good core. And then about six weeks, now maybe almost eight weeks ago, you know, Dan called and said, no, this is 100% happening. Um, so I, we just started to hit the throttle, hit the gas. And, you know, maybe a week later he called and said, not only is it happening, but it's happening about a month earlier than, you know, we were planning yeah. on. Um, so we picked up the gas, you know, we, we just started pounding the pavement even more. And, you know, and now we're here. So, I think that the biggest difference is, you know, the first year we did this and Demetrius was on the, our very first team in 2015. Back then I had to convince guys that this was real, you know, and convince them that it wasn't a scam. It sounds like a scam. You know, it's, it sounds, it's too good. To be it sounds like some Amway shit. Yeah. <laughs> life changing opportunity for life changing money. Uh, you know, we have the chance, I was just saying it downstairs, you know, we have the chance to win a hundred thousand dollars for 10 days of work you know that's pretty damn good so um it's uh it, it's real you know so back then i had to convince guys that it was real and you know now we've we've got an established name and established brand and if you know anything about syracuse basketball or played you know about us this year though like i i, I had to i did less convincing of guys to play and more it was almost guys coming to me and saying like hey i want to be part of this i don't care what role i play i don't care if i start come off the bench how many shots I take. I just want to play. And um, I think that's because in part, like the rest of us, you know, Demetrius and everybody else, they've, they've just been sitting on the couch. People want to play back. I'm a rec player. I want to play basketball. You know, I've had fun shooting in the gym this week. And, um, you know, so to play, be the first sport basically back on TV in the middle of a pandemic, ESPN, million dollars. What You know, you can't ask for anything better than that. Yeah, but hey, before I get to Demetrius, uh, just real quick, I uh, just want to wish Kevin a happy birthday. So, uh, you know, we appreciate your time, uh, your birthday, and only fitting that uh, you guys uh, give him a nice gift tomorrow, Demetrius. Uh, get oh, this yeah. thing started off right. 21 years old. He can drink now. <laughs> I say, he yeah. looks 21. He still looks 21. I know that picture that we have uh, in the slide coming up, that must have been like a 2015. That was, that was a, a young Kevin. Ian J. Brandy only, by the way. Very on brand. TV. <laughs> 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 All right. Hey, Demetrius, before we really kind of get into things, this is a Syracuse uh, alumni team. And, and off camera, we were talking a little bit about the one non-alumni guy. So, uh, Will Raymond, uh, Kevin was able to pick up and, and join the team. And, uh, you know, so a lot of Bayheim's Army folks are going to watch this video. So, tell them a little bit about Will Raymond and why you're excited to play with him. Will is a pretty good guy. I did, honestly, I didn't know – who he was or what he was, uh, what he was about. I've heard some good things from Coach Blackwell and obviously Kevin, but ever since we started practice, he brings energy. He um, he continues to you know fight for the loose balls. He does all the dirty work, but he can also shoot the long ball, which gives us an option when he's in the game. So so far so good with him, I, and I'm pretty sure when he does get his opportunity to play, he's going to play well. 
Yeah, and I'm really looking forward to that. And you're back for your third year with uh, Bayheim's Army. So you played in 2015, 2018. You just killed it. I mean, shot lights out, an amazing tournament, and uh, back for 2020. So it seems like you kind of space yourself out a bit, but um, back for 2020. So what can the fans expect from you as, as far as uh, gameplay goes? Just playing the right way, playing hard, playing like every possession I play like it's my last. And, and I hope that the other guys on the team sees that and I can show them that that's how you have to play in a tournament like this. Every every possession counts and every time you get the ball, we want to try to make something good happen. Uh, but I'm very, very excited to play. This is my first time playing after surgery. I had to take a year off from uh, playing basketball, but I'm very, very excited to, to just be out there playing and competing, but not only competing, but trying to win some money also. Hey, right. winning money is always, always nice. I would yes. definitely agree with that. So, Kevin, obviously looking at the, the stats in this team, this is a really, really loaded roster. And having the cohesion of almost all of you playing for Syracuse and the same systems definitely helps out. But what, one concern is it's a bit thin. You only have eight guys due to some defections uh, under the conditions, obviously. How do you plan on getting around the lack of depth in a very competitive tournament format? Yeah, well, look, if you're, uh, if you're a Syracuse fan like your wonderful girlfriend is, uh, you, would know, <laughs> you would know that, you know, Bayheim plays seven guys max. You know, he might yeah, play he has, he, he has six and a half. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, look, I think that ideally eight guys is, is kind of what you want. You know, in the past we've had nine or ten. One year we actually had 11, and, you know, to have the depth, uh, just to be prepared for anything, but it's really hard. Last year we had nine guys. It doesn't seem like a big difference from eight to nine. It's only one, obviously, but it is a huge difference to try to get nine guys minutes and nine guys in a rhythm. It's next to impossible, you know, I think, let alone anything more than that. Um, you know, and you look at Marquette, what they did tonight, you know, Travis Diener, I don't think played one minute. So, like, I think that they're doing a good job of, of managing minutes. Um so, yeah, we're, we're a little thinner, but that's okay. I think it's almost – it wasn't intentionally by design that way because we had two guys who weren't able to come. You know, we were trying – we are trying to take into account that we could lose guys for COVID and everything else. But I think eight is a sweet spot. Everybody who's on this team is going to play. Everybody's going to be – have to be ready. Everybody's going to contribute, and everybody's going to have, you know, moments to shine. Demetrius might have 31 game and five the next, but somebody else will pick up the slack. Right. And um, I, I, I love the team. I think it's our best team yet. We've got eight guys, too, that are 100% bought in. Um, they all want to be a part of this. I really didn't have to convince anybody on here that it was the right thing to do. They all want to be here, which is what you need to win. You know, you need teams that are like overseas elite, to be candid, you know, that see the bigger goal. Which is which is the prize money? Yeah. So you said Demetrius could go off thirty for one game, maybe not be the feature guy for another game. So for Fanduel fantasy purposes for tomorrow, can I count on thirty for you tomorrow, Demetrius? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna try. Uh, you know, but it doesn't matter who scores. You know, it all depends on who's hot, who's not, who who is in an offensive flow, and that's who should get the ball. But like Kevin was saying, we're trying to put the egos aside and, you know, and uh, everybody is a piece of the puzzle and we're just trying to play our piece, whether it's a big piece or a small piece. If you play your piece, hopefully in the long run, things will work out. Right, right. And tell me a little bit about how practices have been going on. I've heard really mixed reviews about uh, practice facilities, um, some good courts, some bad courts. So have you guys been able to get some really good work in uh, live action or has it been more? Oh, yeah. uh, ha have you have you used ice skates? No, no. You know what? <laughs> there were some t there were some courts that weren't the best, but you have to adjust. You know, this is you know, this is basketball. You know, guys, you know, some guys complain, but you know what? You have to adjust and you have to adapt to what you have and try to make the most and best out of it. We have been fortunate to play on nice courts these past couple of days, and we've played competitive five-on-five, five, and it's a lot of competition, a lot of trash talking, and guys are getting ready for tomorrow, and I think we're peaking at the right pace right now. So, so far, so good. 
I just heard you say five on five. Is Kevin with the scout team? You know what? He is. <laughs> you know, he you know what he scored. I think he hit a three, right? Kev, you hit a three. three. Last game? I had a I had that turnaround hook. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know about the hook, but <laughs> you did hit a three. I'm not sure about the hook. It was, more, it, was, it was more like a turnaround layup thing. <laughs> yeah, sure. As long as it went in, it don't matter what it was. Yeah. Hook, layup. Basketball's a results-based business. Pretty yeah. points don't fucking count. So I'm looking yeah. at this roster, and it's actually pretty loaded with offensive talent. I mean, one thing about the revolution of basketball that, that most people understand is, like, what the Warriors have been doing, the five out. Like, even Raymond, the new player, understands the stretch five. So literally everybody there is a sniper. So it's a five-out offense. You guys can make teams get punished for yeah. doubling. So how is uh, the coach going to be able to get different looks? Like, are you going to be running a lot of 1-4 high, a lot of horn sets to try to get Devin Dorf in action and just start kicking all these shooters, yourself included, Demetrius? Well, we have a couple of sets that we run for for certain guys, depending on the type, depending on the type of situation. We run certain plays for certain guys. but. I think it's going to just come where if the team is playing the zone or versus man, that would determine what we're going to play on offense. But like you said, we have a couple of guys that can shoot it. Everybody's a threat from the three point line. And that's what the game of basketball is basically evolving into is you either get a three pointer or you get a dunk. So we have a lot of different shooters that Brandon Trish is back this year. He's a, I think he is going to be the key piece. Very, very high IQ, tough, strong, makes the right decision at the point guard position. So I think uh, we're going to be okay. Yeah, I mean, you, me you mentioned the whole, like, uh, zone versus man, which you guys are going to face. I would have to think that anybody that plays a zone against you guys is an idiot because shooting eats zones <laughs> up. Like, if anybody – if they dare give you a 2-3, I have a feeling you guys are going to eat. Uh, you know what? I have a feeling – the same feeling you have, I have a feeling. But I don't think teams are going to play zone on us. And if they do, you know – we're just going to adapt. Whether teams are playing zone or man, we are smart enough to understand what we have to do to try to make the best offensive, the best offensive play we can. Yeah, and uh, I mean, just tons of shooters. My, my prediction, I expect Andrew White to go off. He's played uh, in the TBT a number of times and, um, you know, struggled a little bit, uh, surprisingly. So I think this is the year we see uh, Andrew White go off and just really put up uh, some big numbers. So, um, But let's talk about Richardson a little bit, uh, Kevin. Obviously, you recruited him uh, into the TBT. This is going to be your first year. So um, obviously, you probably had your eye on him for a lot of years now. So what did it take to get him on board? And what's your advice to him as a first-year TBT guy? Obviously, games that basketball is basketball but uh, TBT does have some uniqueness yeah well honestly it helped getting him um my younger brother Sean just graduated Syracuse this year he played there for the last five years he was a walk-on and then the last two years was on scholarship and the year that he came in was Malachi's freshman year too so they got very close and have stayed very close and uh, um you know every year except this year because of COVID we go back up to Syracuse we have a training camp and we play against the current SU team and kind of, you know, they help us. We help them on some things. Uh, you know, I was like Demetrius, like help the younger guys and then the younger guys help us get ready. Um, and the first year we had the team in 2015, Malachi was an incoming freshman. So, you know, he, it's kind of full circle. He's known about the team since then. And we were just talking tonight, joking around about how the first time Malachi was saying the first time he played against Devendorf, he's like, man, that dude's crazy. You know, um, <laughs> after yeah. each other. Um, so, you know, he's known about the team since our first year. He helped us build that first team uh, on the practice side. And um, I actually talked to him kind of last minute last year about potentially playing. Uh, he had an injury that he just kind of needed to sort out, didn't want to rush it. And it was pretty seamless to ask him to play. I was surprised how quick he said yes this year. <laughs> I talked to him maybe February or March, you know, early on, even I think before Corona. He just said, yeah, I'm in. And, you know, now seeing him here and getting to know him, I see why. You know, the guy is – he's very similar to Eric, very similar to, to Demetrius. He just wants to play basketball. He loves the game. Relentless, ruthless competitor. Uh, also has extreme talent. I mean, I think he, if he wore a, a big pair of shoes, he might touch six foot seven as a two-guard. Um, good rebounder, amazing shooter, just good skill set and, and a good teammate too. So – I think he's going to be one of the best players in the tournament, um, and I'm really excited to see him out there. 
Yeah, I mean, having a guy with his pedigree, a former first-round pick, is going to really help, I think, the offense. So, Demetrius, this is a, a great assemblage of talent. One of the most talented teams in the tournament, even losing McCullough and Leiden. This is still a championship-level quality team. However, we just got to talk about the elephant in the room is that you guys do lack size. Let's just go ahead and just get that yeah. out of the way. Um, yeah, we do. You're going to play the five some. Uh, have you been eating your protein, or did you guys make any emergency calls to, like, Craig Forth or Billy Selick to try to get them involved? <laughs> Forth. What, what, what was, D, was DC called? Did you guys try to get Cycli no. out there? What happened? You know, we are small, but we don't play for size. We play with heart. And if we do our work early, if we make sure we do our assignments early by boxing out, putting a hand on a guy or elbow on a guy and securing the ball, not trying to get out in transition to get easy plays, if we secure the ball in the half court, now we can get out and run. And like I said earlier on another interview I had today, rebounding is our top priority. And that was one of the reasons why Bayham's Army lost last year. So that was the top priority going in, well, coming here in Columbus is to rebound. Obviously, we lost two guys that are over 6'9". But, you know, we understand what we lack and what, and what is our weakness. And we have to make sure that we're going to try to turn that into a strength. Absolutely. That's a very good mindset. And Kevin, also, one thing about 2-3 is it does have provide an interesting rebounding positive name. Because that of a 2-3, you're always going to have people around the rim. Collapsing is easier, but it does make box outs a little harder to identify because you're not covering a man, you're covering a space. So when a streaking guy crashes the boards, you have to put body on body. How are you guys doing with that communication, trying to make sure you can get after those active offensive rebounders? Yeah. Okay. Ooh, we're going to lose Kevin. Demetrius, you want to just take that one real quick while Kevin comes back? I'm sorry. Uh, what was the question again? I'm sorry. I'll go ahead and ask again. We're having a little bit of technical difficulties due to the yeah. internet. Oh, you're back? He's back. There you go. Back. We got sorry. you, Kevin. Did you get the question? Yeah, we're on the hotel Wi-Fi, so sometimes yeah, it's all right. It's... Sometimes it's not. I don't think it's – I think it's no, it should be okay, but I don't think it's used to everyone being in their hotel no. room all at once. No. Uh, in the middle of the day, especially, so it's getting throttled. But The Wi-Fi um, in New York is not just on, for anyone. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just on the, you know, the construction piece is like, um, I, I would say on average, the last five years, our team has been the tallest team in the tournament, I think. Uh, 2016 in particular, I think we had four, if not five guys over six foot nine. And, uh, you know, we haven't won that way. And, you know, this year I was excited to have Leiden McCullough because they're tall, but the reason they're on the team was not because they were tall. The reason was because they were skilled. Right. And, you know, they were, for extenuating circumstances, they came with us. But, you know, these eight guys um, all understand what we need to do. You know, I mean, we lost to Brotherly Love last year, who was much smaller than us. And their biggest, you know, they, they play a 6'10 guy off the bench a little bit, but really they play 6'5", 6'6", 6'7". And they got 17, 18 offensive rebounds and won the game. So much of rebounding is effort and position. And um, these guys know that. You know, we've got, like I said, Malachi is 6'6", six, six, probably almost 6'7", as a two-guard. Brandon Trish is the biggest, strongest point guard in the tournament, without question. He looks like a superhero. You know, Demetrius <laughs> and Andrew are willing to, to, to mix it up inside. Dante, you know, 6'10", he wants, to, he wants to mix it up. And, you know, and Will Raymond is – scrappy as hell he's you know was a leading rebounder and and basically Colgate history leading rebounder in the Patriot League defensive player of the year in the Patriot League so we're not the tallest team for sure but we've had the tallest team and we haven't won so you know this team we have is a lot of skill a lot of talent a lot of shooting and guys who are still willing to rebound and I think being, being willing to rebound is what you need to rebound all right, so that brings us to your opponent. So the men of Mackey. So I think there was a little bit of a shock in this game. Um, I, I don't think anyone thought men of Mackey was going to be a, a pushover and Heartfire was going to, you know, blow them out of the arena. But men of Mackey ended up uh, with the win. Obviously, Justin Dentman uh, went off. I mean, he just went absolutely crazy. Isaac Haas, solid big man. So I'm assuming uh, you guys are in quarantine. So unless you were practicing or in a, or in a team meeting, you, did you watch this game, Demetrius? Oh yeah, of course. Actually, we watched it as a group, as a as a whole team. We watched it just to analyze and and talk and strategize, see who's good, who's not, what we have to do, and we all seen that 
Justin Dittman is one of the best guards here. He had 32 points, uh, six for 12 from the three. So we know we have to slow him down. And Isaac Hayes is, you know, he's a monster. You know, uh, he's probably the tallest guy here. And I think if we slow those two guys down, it will slow the rest of the team down. But Justin Dittman is, you know, he's he's pretty good. We actually know each other. We played together in Puerto Rico. We actually had the same agent a couple of years ago. So I know a lot about him. So we have to make sure that we don't follow him at the three-point line because that's where he gets his confidence, especially if he makes one or two and then he gets to the free throw line, he sees the ball going in. That's when he can go off of seven, eight, ten points in a row. So if we try to slow him down and make it difficult for him to catch the ball, I think we'll be okay. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned that because I'm looking at the stats here, and obviously Detman and Haas were a real problem. It took over half the shots. I think you really identified what you're up against mm -hmm. uh, with this. But one thing that strikes me on the stat also is that free throw attempts. They, got, they shot 27 free throws. Yeah. One advantage, I think, of your defense will be you're going to keep people in front of you generally as a 2-3. You're going to try to basically keep them from getting harmed. Like, is part of the strategy to minimize the fouls and minimize the free throws you have to take? Yeah, for sure. I think, I think obviously, we – we want to play with our feet, not with our hands. And if we slow them down that way, don't let them get comfortable seeing the ball go through the basket. Because I'm a player and I and I know once I see the ball go into the basket one time, you know, your, your confidence can go from here to here. So keeping them off the free throw line, keeping them off the board, slowing down Deadman, uh, boxing out, Hayes, I think, I think we have a pretty good chance. Yeah, and Amanda Mackey did a really nice job um, kind of towards the end of the period, right before they hit quarantine, where they added them. And they actually added Ronald Moore last minute as well. So just a note on that. We don't have him listed here on the roster. I don't remember who was on the uh, the other page. But kind of same question to you, uh, Kevin. Um, I think uh, what we're going to see here is a, a battle of your guys' shooting. And if you guys can contain that size, uh, we talked about Haas, but uh, Jaquil Taylor looked really good in some spots yesterday, some – real athleticism. So, um, you know, we, we talked about Raymond. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, you have Green and uh, Demetrius kind of battling down there. And Haas is a big boy. So, um, obviously, you feel good about the, the matchup. But what else stuck out about Menemeki uh, as you watched the game? Yeah, you know, look, I think on our end, we knew that we were going to be a little bit outsized either way because you've got 7-1 Isaiah Austin on one side or 7-3 Isaac Haas. So, uh, we weren't necessarily rooting for – for anybody, but you know, I think uh, you guys and, and a lot of people picked Hard Fire to win. Mm -hmm. So you know, Men and Mackey, I think, impressed a lot of people with how tough they played. And uh, you know, they were down, they were losing, and didn't give up. And I think that the, I think that Hard Fire was more talented, to be honest. But I think Men and Mackey played better as a team, and that's what it takes to win in TBT. Talent doesn't win. Um, you know, and and you look anytime we play, or I look at an alumni team. You know, I know they have, have some kind of grad transfers, you could call them, but um, they still have the Purdue identity. You know, our, our biggest – one of our biggest advantages is that we – these guys know each other. We don't have to practice for three months. Demetrius has never met Malachi and vice versa, but they know how each other plays, you know, and knows strengths and weaknesses and where to find each other on the court before we even step on a practice court. So that's negated a little bit when you have another alumni team. Um so I know that they'll be ready to play, but, you know, we'll be ready to play too. I think it's going to be a really good matchup. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is going to be a really, really, really great matchup here, looking at this sort of roster and looking at the size. One thing I want to ask Demetrius is, so you guys are the favorite. Let's be honest. You guys are the favorite. You guys are one of the tournament favorites. You're my pick to win the whole thing. I just got away. I picked you guys to start to win the whole thing, which is a curse. I am so sorry for doing that to you guys, by the way. <laughs> not I going never, I, yeah, I got my desk right here. Um, no, but – the one thing about this is interesting is you guys are a favorite. You guys have been a favorite before. You've always gone deep, never quite taken the step of getting the money. You guys have come really close, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, Mackie, first-time team. They weren't supposed to win the first round. They were fairly large underdogs to hard fire. House money, nothing to lose. Underdog status, mm -hmm. no fear. Does that kind of concern you, playing a team that's got no reason to even care at this point? They're just – it's straight house money? It doesn't concern me, but it's basketball, and – we respect each other to the utmost respect and it doesn't matter who has us picked to win or who has it picked to lose. You still have to put the ball in the basket. You still have to play. 
And I'm pretty sure that they're going to be motivated to have an upset. But we have to match their energy. And we have to play like we're underdogs because we know that they're going to come and try to play 150%. So uh, hopefully everybody comes ready to play. And like I said, we can have strategize where we slow certain guys down, you know, trying to make it hard for them to catch the ball in their spots. And we can just live with the results. All right. Yeah, so as we get uh, closer to closing, I know you guys uh, have to get back and get to rest and finish game planning. Uh, Kevin's got to eat some more cake or ice cream for his birthday. <laughs> but, uh, so, Kevin, any uh, kind of parting thoughts for uh, Bayheim's Army? So you guys have one of the best fan bases in the world in the TBT, and so obviously you're going to have a lot of eyes on this game tomorrow at 4 o'clock. So what parting words for those folks? My parting words are we're going to miss him. Uh, I think – there's no question we have the best fans in tournament history. And, um, we, we've sold out gyms in Brooklyn and Atlanta and Philadelphia and Baltimore and Chicago and last year's series. You know, not only uh, – I mean, our fans travel. And I know that they would have been here in Columbus. Uh, a couple might still show up trying to get in. But, but. <laughs> We're going to be watching for you guys making the walk from uh, the Hyatt to the arena. I'll be out there. Right. Exactly. So um, – so, yeah, I mean, to, to those people, we just say, you know, thank you and tune in and we're going to play as hard as we possibly can. Uh, we know what it takes to win. I've said it a bunch of times, but it, it's effort, it's teamwork. And, um, you know, I think the special thing about our team, obviously, is the guy on our jerseys, Coach Bayon. And um, whether you're a Syracuse fan in the 70s or, you know, you're an incoming freshman, um, everybody is rooted for the team with the same exact coach, you know, and all these guys have played for the same exact coach. So a lot of other schools or companies or universities use the word family, but at Syracuse it is because we've all had the same kind of connective DNA as fans, as players. Um, so we're looking forward to making Coach Bayheim proud, looking forward to making the fans proud and, you know, and, and, and getting this thing done. I'm always jealous of that. My girlfriend's been a Q's fan her entire life. That's where she's from. And she's literally had Beheim be her coach her entire lifetime. We're both 41. <laughs> I've gone through, I think, about 5,000 Memphis coaches in the time you guys have had literally <laughs> one coach. So, Demetrius, uh, as we're closing out, I was saying, again, thanks for your time. You've been so generous. We really hope you guys the best tomorrow. Um, is there a favorite memory of your experience in TBT? My favorite uh, Beheim's Army memory is watching Eric Devendorf try to fight the entirety of 19th and only down in Philadelphia in 2000, I believe 16, I think, is when he tried to fight the entirety of Philly. That's my favorite Bayheim's Army memory. What's yours? I would say two years ago, 2018 in Brooklyn, when we we were kind of on the ropes. I think we played uh, Armor Athletes Care, I think, and I had the game winner for the Eli ending. Uh, I think that would that was probably – my favorite memory, um, knocking down that big shot pass from John Gillen in the corner. I think that was my big memory, just to end the game. I didn't know how important the Elam ending really was until I hit the shot. Everybody ran up to me. I'm like, I didn't know what was going on. But uh, I would say that was probably my favorite, favorite memory so far. And hopefully we have more in these next couple oh, yeah. of days. Yeah, on that note, I mean, we're expecting more memories out of you guys. Hopefully there's a deep tournament run for the Bayheim's Army. Gentlemen, thanks for coming on the show. I appreciate Hainer, it. Thank you. Right, thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you guys for having us. Hainer, thank you for picking us to win the tournament. You don't want to <laughs> thank me for that. That's not a thank you. That's a screw you. Actually, Trust me, that's not, that's not what you want. That's not what you want. We're the top prognosticator at 4-4 four four right now. The games have been wild. So, uh, the top prognosticator. Yeah, I've sucked. <laughs> so, so right now, I mean, you guys are going to win based on uh, his early round prediction. He obviously knows what he's talking about. So uh, just mark it in right now. Syracuse, or Bayheims rather, in the finals, winning the whole thing. I love that. That note, guys, we're signing off. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you, guys. Thank you.